Well, the post-election shake-out continues. Labor's front bench is now starting to take shape. Christina Keneally is in, Ed Husick is out. And so it seems is Andrew Lee. We'll get to all of that in a moment. First, though, to the truly historic moment today, an Indigenous Australian sworn in as a Cabinet Minister for the first time and in the role as Minister for Indigenous Australians, no less. Ken Wyatt is a Liberal from Western Australia and he wore the traditional kangaroo skin coat today at Government House. The same one he wore when he delivered his first speech in Parliament. Now, being Indigenous doesn't mean Ken White will be able to automatically solve some of the entrenched problems of disadvantage and youth suicide confronting Indigenous communities. Being Indigenous doesn't mean he automatically has all the answers here, nor does it mean he'll be able to necessarily deliver the constitutional recognition that he personally supports. And in some ways, this role could be a more difficult one for him than some of his predecessors, given expectations will be high. But his elevation does show Indigenous Australians can have a voice in Cabinet. And his decisions as Minister can't be easily dismissed as those of a paternalistic white fellow who knows best. Finally, we see an Indigenous Australian will be making decisions for Indigenous Australians. And the significance wasn't lost on the Prime Minister as the first post-election cabinet meeting got underway this afternoon. And a particularly big welcome to Ken. Yeah. Yeah. This is a very important day for all Australians and particularly for Indigenous Australians, Ken, and it's been a long time for an Indigenous Australian to sit around this room, particularly in the portfolio that, that you now hold. And, and uh, we're all as one with you and the great task that we have to ensure that all Australians, and in particular Indigenous Australians, have the same opportunities as every other Australian in this country. Ken White was amongst five new faces around the Cabinet table there this afternoon. The Prime Minister urged them all to remain focused on delivering the extra jobs they promised before the election and, of course, retiring the debt, as promised as well. Coming up, I'll be talking to one of those who was sitting around that table this afternoon, the Resources Minister, Matt Canavan. This morning, the entire front bench team were sworn in at a ceremony at Government House, Cabinet Ministers and Junior Ministers as well. Now, while most senior figures have remained in place, there are a bunch of new faces, with marginal seat holders and some of Scott Morrison's allies rewarded. One of those who attended yesterday's first post-election party room meeting, though, now looks like she's fallen short of winning a seat. The count today in the Blue Mountain seat of Macquarie has seen it swing back in favour of Labor's Susan Templeman. As you can see there, she's now likely to hold the seat. The margin has blown out to around 200 votes. It means the government will still have just 77 seats rather than the 78 they'd look like getting. Still enough for a majority, enough to appoint a speaker, but only a narrow majority. On the Labor side, Anthony Albanese was settling into his new office in Parliament House this afternoon as opposition leader, ahead of his first caucus meeting tomorrow. The Labor front bench is still being worked out and won't be announced until Sunday or Monday. Now, worth remembering how this works. The caucus decides who is on the front bench the leader then allocates the portfolios. In other words, it's the factions who call the shots on who is promoted. And, look, they do need to make sure there's an appropriate balance between the left and the right, between the states, and there's a fair balance of men and women as well. Kevin Rudd actually changed that when he swept into power. He called the shots alone as leader when it came to who was on his front bench. But after losing the job and then after finally replacing Julia Gillard and coming back in as Prime Minister for that brief stint before the 2013 election, the system returned to factional control over the front bench. That was part of the deal done at the time, to change the leadership rules. You may recall, in return for making it much harder for Labor to roll a leader, the factions were given back control over the front bench. And so that's the system Anthony Albanese now has to live with. Although he has made his views clear to the factions on a number of people he wants on his team, most notably Christina Keneally. I've made a number of my views very clear uh, to the caucus. For example, Christina Keneally uh, will be a part of my team as far as I'm concerned. I've made that clear. Now, fair enough, Christina Keneally is a former Premier and someone Labor needs, particularly on its Senate front bench. But she hails from the New South Wales right faction, which isn't actually entitled to any additional positions on the front bench after this election result. So for Christina Keneally to come onto the front bench, 
Someone else from the New South Wales right had to go. And so, within an hour of Anthony Albanese's comments, you saw that Ed Husick released this statement. While I've loved being a shadow minister, he said, I won't be running for re-election to that role today. We need to ensure that someone of Christina's enormous talents has the opportunity to make a powerful contribution on the front line in the Senate. So he is standing aside from the front bench. In response, Christina Keneally tweeted, I thank my good friend Ed Husick for his gracious and strong support for me to stand for the front bench. Ed is talented. He enjoys wide support in the New South Wales right and across the ALP. I am certain he will play a big role in an Albanese Labor government. Now, this is a tough blow for Ed Husick, a strong performer, a talent for Labor, a proud Western Sydney local and, of course, a Muslim as well. Someone ideally placed to speak to the sort of voters in Western Sydney who turned against Labor at this election. If this front bench were chosen on talent alone, he would most certainly be there. Some Labor MPs are this afternoon suggesting that the way the Shadow Ministry is chosen does need to be revisited. While determined to have Christina Keneally there, Anthony Albanese did stop short notably today on insisting Bill Shorten also be on his front bench. The former leader is said to be keen on the health portfolio. Bill Shorten will be respected as a former leader of the Australian Labor Party and I will treat him with appropriate respect. The factions will meet tomorrow morning to work on this further before a full caucus meeting in the afternoon. But as mentioned, we're not expecting to see the front bench actually announced until Sunday at the earliest or Monday.